name's Ken, and I have low self-esteem. <laughs> um, is anyone here involved in any sort of democratic decision-making endeavor of any sort? A, a, a group, a party? A, so we have a few political junkies, follow politics, vote in an election perhaps, anything of that nature. I'm just guessing here. Uh, I've been involved in that for quite a few years, and through that time I've been a member of a lot of different political parties. And, and I liked them all, and I hated them all. And each one had something to offer, and each one had something that really wasn't very good. And I, I quit. I would, I would join a party, I would get involved, I would volunteer, I'd be active, and I'm sure many of you have done the same sort of thing. And then something would really tick me off and I'd quit. And either it was the guy in charge, or it was a policy, or it was a procedure, who knows? And I got to thinking about it, and got together with a couple friends, and I said, what is this? Is it me? Is, it me? is there something wrong with me? I can't fit into these groups, I can't get along with this outfit, what's the problem here? And he said, no, he has the same problem. And we have another friend, he has the same problem. So I'm not alone in that. So we started our own organization. We thought, we can do it better. We can figure out what's wrong with these other organizations. Except we didn't. We had all the same problems. <laughs> for all the same reasons. Because you got a bunch of people making decisions about things they're gonna do together, and the way that we went about making the decisions didn't work, just like it doesn't work anywhere else we look at democratic decision-making process. And I'll explain why. When a bunch of people need to make a decision about, pick an issue, uh, a party, policy, okay, government policy, you're going to find a bunch of people on that side of the room say, yes, we like that policy, and a bunch of people on that side of the room say, no, we hate that policy. And you're going to find a bunch of people right down the middle of the room who studied this issue in depth for 20 years. They know it inside and out, and they know exactly what should be done. But these people over here, well, I don't like it. These people over here, yes, I'll vote in favor of that. They have exactly the same vote as the people who studied it for 20 years. And this is where the problem comes in, because these people who know the issue find themselves in the very unfortunate position of having to sway the less knowledgeable majority. And that seems to be true of almost every issue. So my group and I came up with a way of dealing with this. And what we did was we said, okay, we will take a fixed number of votes. Instead of having a throwaway vote, yay, nay, you get a hundred. Here you are, beginning of the year, here's a hundred votes. Use them for whatever you want. Vote one on this issue, or vote a hundred. Vote your heart. Vote your conscience. Vote what you know. Vote in a way that makes a powerful statement. You're no longer stuck with yes or no. You now have, I'm putting a hundred on that one. So you have a way of gauging in the democratic process, not just in favor or against, but how much you're in favor, how much you're against, how much you love, you love that candidate. That guy is the savior of the world. I'm putting a thousand votes on him. This guy, he's a snake. I'm voting a hundred votes against him. So I don't have to pick between candidate C and D to make sure that E doesn't get elected. I'm just going to vote against E. <laughs> Problem solved because the other two guys are okay with me. You do away with strategic voting. We no longer have strategic voting. Problem solved. And your committed minority, the people who understand the issue, the people who really care about any particular issue, now have the opportunity to really make their voice heard, to really show what they want without having to sway the less knowledgeable majority. The downside to all this, and there is a downside, is that it's a little more complicated than what we do. You have to keep track of how many votes people have, because when you run out, they're gone. You have to keep track of 
how many votes were for a particular issue or candidate, and you have to keep track of how many were against, because you subtract the against votes from the for votes, and whoever has the most net positive vote, whether it's policy or candidate, wins. So there is an additional burden of complexity, <coughs> but I think in, in today's modern technological society, we can deal with that. Now, I'm, in, I'm a systems analyst. I, I work with computers all the time. And I apologize right now because I don't have a PowerPoint and I'm not tweaking anybody right now. But that's okay because I don't think this needs it. So we do have a little more complexity, but I think in the long run, if it gives us the ability to get around some of the problems that are created by the limitations to the way we practice democracy, I think it's worth doing. I think it's worth doing not just for our little group, my, my little group, but it's also worthwhile doing doing in, the, in a larger sense, municipal elections, provincial elections, federal elections, and I'm not suggesting we try that right away. What I'm suggesting is we start small, we start with political parties. I think that's the primary focus of this, because everything we do in politics in this country is a direct result of the way we run political parties, and having been a member of as many as I have, I can tell you they all suck. <laughs> this could fix it. Thank you.